Hello, my name is Tony Pike and I am the founder of CAT3C. CAT3C is designed to provide supplemental training as you work your way through your ATPL studies. To help you achieve your goal of becoming a professional pilot, CAT3C have developed an invaluable series of unique EASA ATPL exam passbooks, which have been specifically designed for the iPad and are available in the Apple iBook store. The passbooks contain hundreds of exam style questions and are supported by clear in-depth explanations and interactive diagrams. The link to the iBooks can be found on the web page below or at the CAT3C website at the Bookstore tab. Additionally, we currently deliver three-day classroom-based general navigation courses and will also be providing future interactive online training sessions plus a range of pre-recorded video seminars. More information on our online sessions and our three-day UK-based classroom training courses can be found at our website www.cat3c.com But for now, sit back and enjoy this QEV. A VOR is situated at position north 55 degrees 26 minutes, west 5 degrees 42 minutes. The position of the aircraft is north 60 degrees, west 10 degrees. The variation at the VOR is 9 degrees west, and the variation at the aircraft position is 11 degrees west. The initial true track angle of the great circle from the aircraft position to the VOR is 101.5 degrees. Which radial is the aircraft on? Is it on the 276 degree radial, the 278 degrees radial, 296 degrees radial, or the 294 degree radial? Now, all radials are magnetic tracks from the VOR. The only information we've got is the true track from the aircraft to the VOR. So the best way of answering this is to draw up a very simple sketch and try and plot some angles on it so that we can work out what the final radial is. So, we start with two meridians in the northern hemisphere, like so, and a simple track line across the two radials. Now we know the bearing from the aircraft of the VOR is 101.5 degrees. That's an easterly track. So the track must be going left to right. This must be the position of the aircraft, and this must be the position of the VOR. The bearing at this position is 101.5 degrees true. We have to calculate the bearing from the VOR back to the aircraft. Also, we must calculate that in degrees magnetic. But before we calculate that in degrees magnetic, we're going to work it out in degrees true. Simplest way of doing that is, first of all, is to calculate the back bearing at the aircraft position. And that is the simple reciprocal of 101.5. We add 180 degrees to 101.5, and that gives me 281.5 degrees true. Now observe the size of the angle at the VOR compared to the angle at the aircraft. We can see that the angle at the VOR is greater than the angle at the aircraft, meaning this angle is greater than 281.5 degrees true. By what? The difference between two great circle track angles on the same line is convergency. Convergency is equal the change of longitude multiplied by the sine of the mean latitude. Okay, first part of that is the change of longitude. We know that this is west 10 degrees, and we know that this meridian is west 5 degrees and 42 minutes. To calculate the difference, as they are both in the same hemisphere, both Western Hemisphere, we subtract the lesser number from the greater number. And we find that the answer is 4 degrees and 18 minutes. Now 
we now need to find the mean latitude from which we must find the sine. To find the mean latitude, we take the two latitudes that we know, which are 60 degrees north, and the other latitude, which is 55 degrees and 26 minutes north. Add these together. Gives us 115 degrees and 26 minutes. Divide that by 2. And I'll do this on the calculator to show how it can be done. So we place 115 DMS. 26 DMS divided by 2 equals, and the answer we get is 57 degrees and 43 minutes. Leaving that number in the calculator, I then simply press the sign button equals, and I get a value of 0.845. And the final answer, 0.845 multiplied by 4 DMS, 18 DMS equals three and just under three and just over three and a half degrees. We we'll call it 3.5 degrees. That's close enough for government work. We know that the track at 281 at uh, the VOR is greater than 281.5, so we simply add the 3.5 to it which gives me a value of 0, 0.582. Remember though, that that is in degrees true. What I need is the value in degrees magnetic. So clear a bit of space on the board. To convert the true bearing into a magnetic bearing, we once more apply Cadbury's Dairy Milk Very Tasty. Plot in our known true bearing, 285 degrees true. Then we plot in the, bear, the variation. However, we've got two variations. We've got the aircraft at 11 degrees west and the VOR at 9 degrees west. You always apply the variation where the bearing is measured. In the case of a VOR, the, the bearings are measured at the VOR ground station itself and therefore we must apply the variation of 9 degrees west. West is to the left, meaning that the magnetic track or the magnetic heading or track is greater than the true track or heading. 285 plus 9 gives me 294 degrees magnetic. Therefore, the radial that the aircraft is on is the 294 degree radial.